Have you noticed that I don't talk about new battery technologies anymore? It's not because there's nothing happening. There's like two dozen press releases each week. They're all great breakthroughs. Then you never hear of them again. That's why I stopped talking about it. But just the other day, I came across a study about the hype cycle of battery technology, and that really helped me put things into context. Let's have a look. The hype cycle is not just a word. It's a semi-scientific technology assessment tool that was introduced by the American IT firm Gartner in 1995. The idea is to look at how much attention a technology attracts the visibility as a function of time. The early visibility of a technology is driven by excitement that will fade away unless the technology is sufficiently mature to make it into application. The hype cycle then combines both the initial excitement excitement and the maturation. It has five distinct phases. There's the initial trigger, the peak of excitement, the trough of disillusionment, the slope of enlightenment and the plateau of productivity. Sounds like my journey through New Year's resolutions. Peak excitement in January, trough of disillusionment by February, and if I'm lucky, a plateau of productivity by December. A technology can see several peaks of excitement before it matures. Artificial intelligence, for example, just passed its fourth peak of excitement and made it into productivity with only little disillusionment, mostly concerning the number of fingers on a hand. Nuclear fusion has also seen at least two peaks of excitement previously, after the initial one, there was the cold fusion enthusiasm in the 1990s. The third fusion hype cycle hasn't yet peaked because it'll take a few more years to see whether any of the new fusion startups deliver. I hope we'll finally make it to productivity. Okay, so this is how the hype cycle works. Now, what about those batteries? Battery technology is getting more important by the day because we're all supposed to drive electric and we need them to store renewable energy from intermittent sources. The most widely used batteries at the moment are lithium-ion batteries. Their major problem is that they're quite heavy, or to be more precise, they don't store as much energy per mass as, say, fossil fuels. They have, as we say, a lower energy density. So one of the major things we want from new batteries is a higher energy density. But this isn't the only thing we want, because besides energy density, we also want them to be able to deliver energy quickly. That's the power density. We want them to reliably recharge thousands of times. They should be environmentally friendly, robust and durable, safe and last but not least, cheap. That's a long list and that's why you see so many battery headlines that then vanish in the junkyard of science news. Because you might have found a way to improve one thing and then you fail on another. It's like looking for a unicorn that can also do your taxes. To make the battery hype even more confusing, scientists aren't just on the lookout for new compounds, but also for new technologies or new methods of manufacturing. This is why battery technology is a mixed bag that contains everything from sodium ion batteries to silicon anodes, solid state batteries, to production methods like high speed stacking. Though that sounds like World League Jenga to me. In the new paper now, they have classified all those batteries according to their potential and the expected time to market. This is their summary. You can see that they think we have several transformative technologies coming up in the next couple of years. First, there are silicon anodes for lithium ion batteries. Some estimates say that they could increase energy density by up to 50% over the currently used graphite anodes. Then we have two improvements to the manufacturing process that should bring down battery prices. Then in five years or so, we might finally see solid state batteries and then there are sodium lithium and lithium air batteries maybe in 10 years from now. They also put these technologies on the hype cycle which looks like this. To understand this graph you have to read the horizontal axis as the time past invention for each item and not a year. For example they say that sodium ion batteries are at peak excitement but they yet have to go through the trough of disillusionment before hitting the 
consumer market. Solid state batteries are currently in the valley of disillusionment because so much has been talked about them and yet they haven't become reality. You could see this disillusionment clearly in a recent announcement from the Japanese company TDK that said they'd made a big breakthrough with solid state batteries and everyone was like, sure, whatever. But those will come eventually. And we also have a couple of improvements that are basically ready to go, though none of those were in the transformative category. It could be, of course, that those people are just wrong. However, they made some effort and I think they know what they're talking about, or at least more than I do. Then again, who knows, maybe in five years we'll all have cars with nuclear fusion reactors. Did you know there's a free and easy way to learn more about the science behind all the videos that you've been watching? Yes, there is. Have a look at Brilliant.org. Brilliant.org offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Some even have executable Python scripts or videos with little demonstration experiments. Whether you want to know more about large language models or quantum computing, want to learn coding in Python or know how computer memory works, Brilliant has you covered and they're adding new courses each month. Sounds good? I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina. That way you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.